Hello, all you people out there. My name is Elise, and I hope you're all doing so, so good today. Today is the start of a new vlog, my second ever vlog. If you saw my first vlog, you know, there were some highs and some lows of filming that vlog. Uh, if you watched it, you know uh, that I basically didn't update in like a week. So this time we are committed to doing bigger and better things, my friends. So let's go ahead and get into it. This vlog is going to contain three of my five star predictions. So when I first started my channel, which was like not that long ago, like two months ago maybe, I had a video of 10 five star predictions for the year, five that I already owned, five that I didn't own and were sort of like more new releasey titles. Um, I have only read one of them. And so I need to get moving if I'm gonna try and get them all in by the end of the year. So I'm gonna read three of them in this vlog. I'm hoping that all of them are five stars. The one I have already read was five stars. So like kudos to me, I got that one right. Here's hoping the other ones are right. So the three books that I'm going to be reading in this vlog, let's see, I have some of them right here. One of them I don't have, I'm gonna be listened to as an audiobook. But the first one is, you Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty by Akwiki Mezi. Um, this is a romance and this one follows Faye and kind of, again, it's a romance, so it follows her kind of finding love. I'll get in more to the plot when I start reviewing each of them. This one is Julia and the Shark. This is by Kieran Millwood Hargrave and Tom DeFreston. They are married. Tom DeFreston, I believe, does the illustrations, and then Kieran Millward Hargrave does the story. Um, this one, let's see if I just open up. Ugh, gorgeous, gorgeous. This one, I believe, is about a young girl who has a kind of connection with her mother through sharks. So they both like love sharks. That might have to do something with the mom's work. And then the mother, I believe, passes away. And it's about how this young girl grieves, kind of, and uses the connection of sharks to help her move through the grieving process. So don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure, but I think this is going to be good. We shall see. And then the last one, the one I don't have, and I'm going to listen to you on audio, is uh, We Had to Remove This Post by Hannah Burbo. Burbo? Burbo? I was saying it Burbowitz and that is wrong. So my bad. It is not that. It, yeah, it's not Burbowitz. That's my American accent coming out. Um, so again, I'll let you know more about that as we get there, but it's about content moderators. I'm intrigued. And that one is translated. Um, so I'll mention the translator when we get to it. So those are the three books and let's go ahead and dive into the first one because I've already started it. So this book, I am over halfway at this point. I'm at like almost exactly like at page 150 and it's 250 pages long. This book, first of all, I'm buddy reading it um, with Kat from Cat Reads on Instagram. And this is like kind of, blowing my mind a little bit so I have a lot of thoughts because I am buddy reading it so like we're constantly sending thoughts back and forth so I'm gonna try and keep my thoughts brief here um, and condense them so in the beginning this is about Fahey who has lost her husband um, in a car accident and that was five years ago and now we kind of flash forward five years she is trying to navigate getting back into the dating scene. Um, and that's the setup for this book. Now, I don't want to tell you a lot about the rest of the plot of this book because one of the great things about this book is it is a romance, but it is a romance that is not tropey in any sense. And I love a trope in a romance. Like I'm not bagging on that, but something really unique about this is that it there is no formula going on here. I really have no idea where this is going to go and it keeps changing throughout the novel. So I am adoring that about this book so far. I love that I'm reading a romance where like, I don't know what's going to happen by the end and that's exciting and is keeping me invested and wanting to turn the pages. So very cool about this book. 
This book is also like bisexual AF. Uh, I think that's even said in this book like there's a conversation where they're like this is the most bisexual conversation we've ever had love that journey for this love that journey for me so I'm enjoying that aspect and it's not just like one character is bisexual there's like four characters that are bisexual in this book so I'm loving that uh, and this also has some you know great food writing like really spectacular like sensual food writing which is like if there's gonna be food writing in a romance I want it to be sensual it's everything I didn't knew I needed um so I'm enjoying that as well of course the writing is stunning if you've read a quaking and messy before they are just a stunner with their words so very much enjoying that and this is so good to read in the summer like this is so summery it takes place mostly on uh an island and it's just beautiful, like beautiful, lush, tropical. Um, and Faye is an artist, so there's some commentary on art as well in here. One like kind of funny thing is the art that Faye does, and this is said from the very beginning, is very violent, like very violent. And there's like a scene where like another character in the book is like seeing it for the first time and they're just like, whoa, this is so good. And I'm like, honey this some serial killer shit like how is nobody commenting on like how fucking creepy this would be if you were like yeah can i see your art and it's like this fucking violent like that was just like a thing where i was like girl run girl run um so yeah that was just hilarious for me in here but overall really loving this so far can't wait to see where it goes i'm probably gonna finish this up pretty quickly and then I will let you know my final review once it's over um but yeah definitely enjoying this so far it's looking good on the five star prediction front so we shall see when we check back in <laughs> Okay, I have finished You Made a Fool of Death of Your Beauty, this one right here, uh, and I'm gonna give you my thoughts. But first, because it's a five-star predictions vlog, I don't always give star ratings, but I am gonna give them for all the books here because it's a five-star prediction vlog. So this one I'm going to say is a four star. So it didn't quite meet the five stars that I was hoping it would be, but I did still love it and I really enjoyed this book and thought it was great and highly recommend it. Um, I think I really appreciated the love interest and how emotionally mature that person was. Um, it's refreshing to see someone being emotionally mature in a romance because I feel like often they can't be together because, you know, they're not emotionally mature and there's like miscommunication because they don't want to communicate with each other and they don't communicate effectively and that can get annoying and this doesn't have that at all. So the person that they end up being with, that Faye ends up being with, is very emotionally mature. I loved that representation. Um, I think that it also just has like stunning writing in this and it's really well done in that sense. And like I said earlier, you really don't know where this is gonna end up. Like you don't know who Faye is gonna um, like end up with. And I think that is interesting um, and unique and I enjoyed that aspect of it. It made me want to keep reading it. Um, Things that I didn't love, which ultimately led me to give it a four star instead of a five star, is that there, the, the steam didn't work for me as well as some other romance books. It just like didn't hit quite the same way. It wasn't bad by any means, but it just didn't hit quite the same way. And I'm not even sure why that is. Um, and then I also think that there was a scene in which Faye is having a confrontation with 
someone in this book and she grabs their face and is like very aggressive and I just felt like that was not okay and it wasn't talked about that that was not okay it was like assumed in the book that that was an appropriate response and that's just not okay I mean if that had been like the other way around if it had been like gender flipped nobody would be okay with it so that really bothered me um and then also if you know you know I'm not going to give any spoilers but I wanted <laughs> the main character Faye to end up with someone else at the end I still enjoyed who she ended up with but I think you know the person that I maybe wanted them to end up with if you've read this so I'll just leave it at that um but yeah I really enjoyed this I would highly recommend this it's very atmospheric like it's got all the island vibes lots of food in it that is like just stunning um, and a, an emotionally mature love interest which I really enjoyed um, it does also get into like some more difficult territory near the end like some complications in the relationship and some messiness in the relationship that would really happen if this situation happened in real life um, and I appreciate the way that it handled that as well so overall really enjoyed and would recommend picking this up and I have also finished reading the next one so I've given you zero updates um, but it's very short and I just read it way too quickly so I'm sorry I didn't give you updates along the way um, but I did finish we had to remove this post by Hannah Bervotes and it is translated by Emma Rolt from the Danish and this book is about a group of content moderators but it's following one in particular and her name is Kylie I believe and this she has this group of friends at work and it shows them kind of going into the job and getting training and then what it's like actually being in the job for a length of time and I think maybe she's there like a year um, and the style of this is written as a like witness deposition and you know that from the get-go so you know that there is some type of trial going on or case going on and you're kind of getting Kylie's side of the story it has been a long time since I've read something that is just in like a first person point of view that's not omniscient it's been so long and it was almost like jarring when I was reading that um, because I haven't read something like that in so long but in some ways it's really simple to follow a storyline like that and I enjoyed just getting like everything from this one character um so I will say this book I gave five stars so yay another five stars um so I really really enjoyed this this book is very slim I think it's like 150 pages um but overall I enjoyed the way that they dealt with the content moderating so as you might assume right this gets into what happens when you become desensitized and just like overly engrossed in really explicit content and for the most part it's really like violent content um, so there is also like sexually explicit content and and other areas but I think it did a good job handling of that of like it doesn't exactly go where you think it's gonna go and I appreciated that uh, I also think that it did a great job of exploring this you know phenomenon that is not new per se but is definitely growing in our media age of kind of like conspiracies and the ease maybe at which someone can get sucked into that so it talks about flat earthers it talks about holocaust deniers and a bunch of other issues um, that when you're ingratiated in a certain rhetoric that can easily get fallen into and I think it did a good job of exploring that as well and it wasn't a place I thought it was going to go so I appreciated that um, and I like that through Kaylee's eyes we got to see how 
different people that started at the same time are being affected differently, but they're all being affected in some way um, and how that manifests for each person. And it kind of makes you think like, you know, what, what would I be like if that were happening to me? What would I think if I was having to see this every day? How would it impact my life? Um, and I really enjoyed kind of that process of thinking through. So yeah, I love this book. I think it was so good. If you're interested in this topic at all, I would highly encourage you to pick it up because it's so short. Um, and I think it does a good job of kind of pushing you as the reader and pushing Kylie as the narrator see like how far can this go um, and the last thing I want to say about this that I thought was really interesting is throughout the training and I think it's ideal that it starts in training because in training you learn the rules of what content you can leave up and what content you cannot and there's so many different like laws, bylaws, subsections, all this type of stuff that make it supposedly nuanced, right? But like, who's getting to decide that? And for instance, it'll be like, you know, you can't have, how do you determine intent in a video? So if there's violent intent, you need to take it down, right? But if there wasn't intent, then you can leave it up. Um, so who gets to determine intent? And then also for things like, you know, if it's a really explicitly violent video, but it's not newsworthy, right? It needs to be taken down. But if it is newsworthy and it's something that people need to see because it's in the news, then you have to leave it up. So then, you know, then we're getting into a discussion of what becomes newsworthy. And so what are we allowed to leave up because the news has deemed that it's worth our time and whose stories are those benefiting? So that was also very intriguing. And throughout the entire novel, they reference the kind of categories that they would say like in real life like uh, quizzing each other like if this video popped up what would you say it is and they would say like you know no violent intent newsworthy blah 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 leave up and stuff like that so I appreciated that kind of throughout the entire novel re kind of framing what's happening the seemingly logical way that they're trying to go through it so yeah I overall really really enjoyed this and would highly recommend. Glad I got a five stars in this video. Take some pressure off of the next book. So I will check back in with you before I finish the next one for sure. Um, so I'll check back in when I've started Julie and the Shark and we'll go from there. Bye. My partner and I and our dog ended up going on a little walkabout um, and that was in Discovery Park. So if you're in Seattle, I'm sure you know of Discovery Park. If not and you come to visit, it's a lovely place to go for a walk if that's something you're interested in doing. So I highly recommend. Um, and now I'm here to give the first little update on Julia and the shark. So I'm so glad I'm actually updating you before it's finished, unlike the last book. Um, but I've read the first 50 pages of this. Let's see, where am I? Yeah, about the first 50 pages of this, about five chapters in, each chapter is about 10 pages. Um, and I figured I would give a quick update because I'll probably finish it the next time I pick it up. Um, so this 
like I said kind of in the beginning, is about Julia and Julia and her mother and father move to a lighthouse for a summer. That's the opening of the book. Um, you do start out at the very opening of the book knowing that Julia's mother is sick. Uh, you're not quite sure from what. So they go to this lighthouse for a summer because her father is going to be fixing up the lighthouse and her mother is also going to be exploring the whales in the area but secretly her mother also has a plan to try and find a Greenland shark which is a very rare type of shark. I think it's the oldest shark in the world and so they've just moved in. They're kind of settling. She has maybe found her first friend. Julia has um, and yeah, that's the main things that have set up the story so far. I'm thinking that it's all going to take place in this one summer at the lighthouse. That's the vibe that I'm getting from it. Not quite sure, but it is very heartwarming so far, just as I thought it would be. So that is great. Um, the book itself, the production is beautiful. So like here are the end papers. There's lots of birds, but then there's also, it's also these like kind of see-through pages that have illustration on them. There aren't a ton of illustrations throughout the book, but the ones there are are very beautiful. So there's like a map. So most page looks like this. So it is full text um, with like maybe very brief images in there. Um, also the page numbers down at the bottom have a shark around them in yellow if you can see that. So yeah, the production is great of this. I'm excited to read the rest of it and see what comes. And I'm really like the writing style so far, enjoying the kind of perspective from, I think she's nine, Julia might be nine, nine or 10, enjoying that perspective, which I don't always love reading from the perspective of a child, but I am enjoying this. So we will see what else this has in store and I'll check in with you once I'm finished. Bye. Okay, people, we are wrapping up this vlog and I am here to talk about the end of Julia and the Shark. Firstly, I need to say there is going to be some editing in what I talked about in the first one because man, did I get it wrong what this book is really about. So if it feels choppy in my first introduction of this book, you know what happened. Um, but overall, I very much enjoyed this. It was not a five star, unfortunately, but it was a solid, solid four star. Still highly recommend, still loved it. Um, so this basically, like I said earlier, follows Julia and her relationship with her mother and, and kind of her whole family. Um, I think this does a really good job of representing the, il the illness that it represents. Um, and they did that with a lot of care and nuance and um, very much appreciate what they did with that here. I think they put it in a way that kids would be able to understand, um, but it's not like so dumbed down as to lack the nuance that needs to be talked about with it. So appreciated that. There are trigger warnings for this book that I would look up if you're worried about it. Like nothing is on the page, um, but it does allude to some stuff. So look up trigger warnings. I don't want to say them here because it would be a spoiler, um, but look them up if you need to look at that. Um, again, I think that this had such a good uplifting tone uh, throughout the whole thing, and that was very enjoyable with some of the heavier subject matter. Um, it has lots of information about the sea and sharks and stars. Um, so I think really informative in that way. And yeah, again, the production is just so great. Like the illustrations are great. Um, the pages with that are, have like the little see-through illustrations on them. Loved all of it. So highly recommend this. If you're interested in picking up, do it. And I know that the kind of second in this series, they don't follow the same people, I believe, but like a new kid slash animal combo has recently come out I believe so there is more if you really enjoy this one as well so yeah that was Julia and the Shark and let's see let me grab the other book that I own so we read three books in this video these two and then I will put the other one somewhere in the ether um I enjoyed all of them we had two four stars and a five star so obviously 
my favorite was we had to remove this post and then I would say this one is next. You made a fool of depth of your beauty and then this one, but these two are very close together. Um, so I would say it's a success. I found at least one more five star. So I'm proud of myself for that and still very much enjoyed these. Um, so yeah, we made it through three more of my five star predictions. Spoiler alert for you that in November, I will be doing another five star predictions vlog because I need to get through them. I still have like half of them to get through. Um, so I need to read a lot. <laughs> so I'll do another vlog in November with three more of my five star predictions. If you have a preference on what those five star predictions are, please let me know. I will read the ones that you want me to read the most. Um, I'll also link the video in which I talk about all the five star predictions down below if you're curious and seeing what they are. So with that friends, I will see you in the next one. Bye.